Bonjour. My name is Linda C. McCabe. I'm the author of Quest of the Warrior Maiden and Fate of the Saracen Knight. And this is the first video in what I intend to be a series of videos describing how I've undertaken the ambitious project of retelling the Chanson de Geste for modern day audiences. This video will be a brief history of the Chanson de Geste or Songs of Deeds. First off, let me share my screen. And play from this top. Um, first off, I need to give a little background about Charlemagne, King Charles the Great, Charlemagne. He expanded the Frankish Empire to what is most of modern day Europe. His reign lasted from the year 768 until his death in 814. He was a giant among men for his time, for he stood six foot four and lived until the age of 72. During his reign, he not only expanded territory, he expanded literacy and started what is known as the Carolingian Renaissance. The word Carolingian comes from the Latin Carolus Magnus. His historic accomplishments were many, and shortly after the marble slab was slid over his tomb, the mythologizing of him began. For several centuries, troubadours and jongleurs in southern France and northern Italy created a cycle of legends regarding Charlemagne and his paladins. The legends were in both French and Italian, although ironically what has become to known as the Matters of France are more widely known today in Italy than they are in France. Some of the stories involved Charlemagne going on a crusade to the Holy Land. That never happened. He died in 814 and the first crusade was called in the year 1095. Even when there was some historical event in his stories, the facts were changed to make it grander than life. Most famous of these legends is La Chanson de Roland, the Song of Roland. This was written in the 11th century and alas, the poet's name is now lost. We cannot attribute it to a Homer or a Virgil. The story is about the real life defeat of Charlemagne's army by Basques in the Roncesvalles Pass in the year 778. However, in La Chanson de Roland, the Basques are changed to the Saracen army and Roland, the hero of this epic poem, is betrayed by his stepfather, the evil Ganelon of the House of Maganza. Charlemagne's rear guard were attacked as they headed back to the French Frankish Empire and they are massacred. Roland, finally realizes that he cannot fend off his enemies and blows upon his horn to alert Charlemagne, who is at the head of the procession. Roland's temples burst from blowing so hard on his horn that blood courses down his face as he dies. It was a magnificent death and an incredible tale. The story became so popular that Roland could not remain dead. Similar to Hollywood sequels that don't explain how a character has come back to life, Roland and other paladins were alive and shared new adventures. In these new tales also came new heroes and new villains. These were the superheroes of the Middle Ages. None were bitten by radioactive spiders or came from another planet, but they were engaged in superhuman feats of bravery and glory. These tales were told in both French and Italian, so Roland is known in French stories, same character as Orlando in the Italian stories. 
One tale tells of Orlando being raised in obscurity. Charlemagne's sister Bertha, who eloped with the young Frankish noble Melon, they ran away from court and sought refuge in the village of Sutri, Italy. And they lived in a cave where Orlando was born and raised. His father died in battle when he was a small child. Then one day, Charlemagne's army stopped in the village on the way to visit the Pope in Rome. The army was feasting out of doors and young Orlando, being a bold and hungry child, went up and stole food from Charlemagne's plate. The guards chased the thief and tracked him to the cave where they discovered Charlemagne's sister. She was brought before the king and he was re overjoyed to be reunited with her. And Bertha and Orlando were then brought back to Aachen so that the young boy could be raised in the palace school and trained as a knight. Another nephew of Charlemagne became popular in these legend cycles was Renaud de Montauban or Ronaldo de Montabano. One of the most famous aspects about Renaud was his horse Bayard. Here's a painting I saw in La Maison de Cheval in Chantilly. We see Bayard carrying Renaud and his three brothers because this magnificent steed in some tales was able to magically expand. There's a famous story known as Les Quatre Fils Aimons, where Charlemagne's nephew, Renaud de Montauban, is rebellious and defies the king. This is part of a legend cycle known as the Dune de Mayence. There's a small road in Paris named in honor of the four sons. Charlemagne's sword was known as Joyeuse, and in the town of Amboise is a small street named after the sword. A larger example of the spread of Carolingian legend is in Sicily. The Normans invaded the island in 1061 and brought with them the legends of Charlemagne. And while the reign of the Normans in Sicily only lasted about 30 years, the popularity of the Carolingian legends is still present to this day in the Opera dei Pupi. This is a close-up of Rinaldo de Montalbano. This is a line of Frankish heroes. And this is a tapestry used to promote weekly shows. The banner is made in a pectoral fashion with some text base, but some of the people were not as literate. So this was used to promote the, the stories that were going to be shown that week to try to get audiences interested in knowing what was playing that night. Two of the largest contributions in the cycle of legends is Orlando Inamorato by Matteo Maria Boiardo and Orlando Furioso by Ludovico Ariosto. Boiardo began his work on Orlando Inamorato in 1478. He died in 1494, leaving his poem unfinished. So he wrote his poem for 16 years. Ariosto was later given the task of finishing Boiardo's story and his work began in 1505. The first publication for Orlando Furioso was in 1516, taking only 11 years. A further expansive version of this epic poem was published in 1532, 16 years later, for a total of 27 years spent on his magnum opus. In other words, these two poets took 42 years to finish their work. And those two epic poems are the source material for my trilogy. Orlando Furioso is a sprawling tale with locations spanning three continents, Europe, Africa, and Asia. It features a war where the North African Muslim army invades the Frankish empire, a war that never took place. And the story ranges from the depths of hell 
to the summit of terrestrial paradise and includes a magical flight to the moon and back. There's a cast of thousands, dozens of major characters, a myriad of interweaving plot lines, and enough dramatic material from multiple novels, movies, or even several seasons worth of a Netflix original series, if they're interested. Orlando Furioso has been translated into many languages, including English, French, Russian, German, Portuguese, Polish, Hebrew, and Japanese. The first English language translation of this Italian masterpiece was by Sir John Harrington and published in 1591. The tale of how this came about might be apocryphal, but it is entertaining. So I'm going to share that with you. Sir Harrington is said to have translated a body passage from the poem, Canto 28, about the sexual exploits of Giocondo and Astolfo. And he shared this passage with the ladies in waiting for Queen Elizabeth. The queen was not amused. As punishment to her godson for the lewdness displayed, she forbade him from attending court until he had translated the entire poem. The banishment lasted for eight years. Another anecdote worth mentioning is that Sir John Harrington is also credited as inventing the flush toilet going to the John and is a noble ancestor to the actor Kit Harrington, better known as Jon Snow in the HBO series Game of Thrones. Orlando Furioso became an international phenomenon and inspired countless artists, composers, and even William Shakespeare. In his play, As You Like It, there are character names that serve as pointers to Carolingian legends. In particular, Roland, Orlando, and Oliver. There are also similar settings, such as the Forest of Arden or Arden Woods, Arden. However, there's a twist in that Shakespeare Orlando in As You Like It carved Rosalind's name in the bark of trees and hung poems on branches, proclaiming his feeling for his beloved Rosalind. While Ariosto's Orlando read his beloved Angelica's name carved into trees, as well as a poem written by the humble foot soldier Medoro, who extolled the virtues of a grotto for romantic trysts. That proclamation caused Orlando to lose his wits, otherwise known as going furioso. Here is a wall in the Ariosto room in the Cassini Massimo in Rome. You see Orlando on the left being despondent as he is unsuccessful in his search for the beautiful Angelica. Then his response after he sees words inscribed on the trees, proof that she has loved another. He goes berserk like Hercules. The most famous artistic rendering of a scene from the story is by a native of Montauban, France, painter Jean-Auguste Dominique Angre. The painting was completed in 1819 and the original hangs in the Louvre in Paris, while a duplicate is hung in the Angre Museum in Montauban. Gustave Doré illustrated the entire epic poem and some of the woodcuts are available in a paperback book by Dover. This image was by Jean-Honoré Fragonard and he did many etchings from the poem, but this one is my favorite because it captures a scene from the storyline that captivated my imagination. That is of the love story between Bradamante and Ruggiero. Here is the warrior maiden Bradamante as she is fighting the wizard Atlanta aloft on a magical hippogriff. Ruggiero was being held prisoner in an enchanted castle by the wizard and Bradamante is sent on a quest to rescue him. I loved the upending of expectation by Ariosto with such a powerful heroine. In 2009, the Louvre Museum 
held a special exhibition regarding Ariosto and how his imagination had inspired many artists. There are also numerous operas inspired by Ariosto. A few of them include Jean-Baptiste Lully's Roland, Franz Josef Hayden's Orlando Palladino, and Antonio Vivaldi's Orlando Furioso. And Georg Friedrich Handel was inspired to write multiple operas, including El Cina, Ariodante, Orlando, and Rinaldo. Another famous work that alludes to Orlando Furioso is Miguel Cervantes' Don Quixote, where the main character imagines himself to be a heroic figure similar to Orlando and Rinaldo. There are other works derivative of Orlando Furioso, including a graphic novel my friend Alexis E. Fayardo, Kid Beowulf, and The Song of Roland. For anyone interested in learning more about the Chanson de Geste, I recommend the um, French of Italy project at Fordham University. And you can find that by typing in French of Italy in Fordham or frenchofitaly.ace.fordham.edu. And reading books translated into English by Michael Newth, The Heroes of the French Epic and also The Heroines of the French Epic. Lastly, I want to mention my trilogy that has the first two installments published, and I am working on the third, Quest of the Warrior Maiden and Fate of the Saracen Knight. They are available in both ebook and trade paperback versions. Signed copies are available from the independent bookstore in Kalamazoo, Michigan, kazoobooks.com. You're also invited to visit my website at lindacmccabe.com or questofthewarriormaiden.com. I hope you enjoyed this brief history of the Chanson de Geste. I will be making more videos where I discuss my adaptation process and show pictures from my research trips to France, Italy, and Germany. Bonne journée!